worst shows ever. I got five pages of notes. I'm not kidding. I took notes the whole time. I got five pages of uh, little handwriting notes. So. so if you're listening, folks, you can make some dough. Can anybody get into this who's motivated? 1,000%. Why aren't more people flocking into this? This is the formula right here. It's Fine. called subject to. Bro, you're making me sick right now. Why would the bank let me do that? But this guy seemed to come out of nowhere and he's got an unbelievable following tribe. He's got a top podcast. He's got the most popular TV show on A&E called Triple Digit Flip. But what's even more impressive is his heart to serve. Pace Barbie is the guy for all things real estate and he does it all with something called creative financing. going to be everything and anything you could ever want to know about creative financing. When I watch Pace, you know what I see? I see a guy who got a whole universe of shoe lids who told him, you can't do it that way. And he said, F it, watch me. Welcome to Get Creative. What a great intro video. I've actually never seen that. So shout out to the team that put that together. That's a really good intro. Um, I've got a special guest with me today. I've got Maj who is recently engaged guys recently engaged we're super proud of this guy um homeboy finally proposed to this magical woman he's been dating for a good amount of time and so today we're going to be doing an, uh, a one-on-one -on -one with Moz for the next 45 minutes thank you guys for tuning in we do this show just about every wednesday now one thing I want to say about Get Creative is that Get Creative also has six extra episodes every single week I know that's a lot however we make those episodes 12 minutes long throughout the week. Why? Because we realized, okay, we realized that the average person is listening to these podcasts for about 12 minutes. They're on their way to work. They're on their way to the gym. They're on their way to the grocery store. And they listen for about 12 minutes, and then they have to jump onto a different device or come back and restart back over, et cetera. So, Six episodes throughout the week. Make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast on Apple, um, iTunes, or on Spotify. Give us a little bit of love over there. We are officially in the top 50 podcasts in the world around business, real estate, finance, et cetera. And by the end of the year, we will be a top five podcast in the world. Wow. In the world. We are trending towards number five by the end of the year. So super excited about that. And Maj, Amazing. everybody is going to get to hear about your business today. What is going on in your business? What do you need help with? Catch us up to speed because there's a point in the community where Maj, you're going to talk about now you're doing one to three deals a month. There was a point where your overthinking was keeping you from even getting your first deal. That got solved a while back. You now have momentum and with momentum, you have new problems. So start from the beginning. Yeah. Tell us what's going on so people can understand Maj didn't just come out of his mother's womb doing deals. Maj <laughs> also had problems as well to catch us up to speed. Yeah, totally. Uh, before I do that, I just want to say shout out to you, Pace. I'm extremely grateful to be here on your platform. And that intro video was amazing. It, it felt like the Chicago Bulls song before they came out and, and got their game started. So this, mm -hmm. is, this is amazing to be here. Um, but yeah, to jump into the topic with the uh, our business, real estate acquisitions, I kind of started off, uh, like you said, with a bunch of problems, a lot of overthinking. And, you know, I, I started doing what you recommended on the uh, wholesale hotline, and that's squatting up. So I ended up joining about one team for 30 to 60 days. And that lasted... Uh, probably about 45 days and um, joined another team after that and just wanted to see and get my feelers out when I first joined the community. So um, now we're at that point where I'm heading a team with uh, about four solid individuals, you know, shout out to my uh, fiance, soon to be wife uh, that we're working, we're working together as well as my integrator Renville and uh, Joseph Long. Um, mm. we, we've been, a solid team for about, I would say two to three months. 
And we're at a point where we're locking up two deals right now. We got one in Peoria, Arizona. Um, one of which I, I'm not sure if you're buying in that area pace, but uh, I'm buying in uh, Arizona as long as it's a creative deal. It, it is creative, actually. And uh, the only thing is it has a HELOC that's a floating rate. Of oh, that's fine. I don't mind that. 100K. I don't I don't yeah, mind okay. that. That's fine. Um, yeah, the, so let me ca- guys, let me catch up to speed because Maj did not do a good job of that. So let me fix that for you guys. <laughs> Maj joins the community a couple of years ago. He overthought a lot of things. He also owns another business because he is an entrepreneur. He owns a carpet mm-hmm. cleaning business, him and his wife, super smart. They were overthinking, 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 overthinking. And then finally, somebody else in the community helped Maj get his first deal. Actually, not too long mm-hmm. ago. So shout out to Justin Tumanowski. Shout out yeah, to Justin and Ted. Ted Miller. Shout mm-hmm. out to the community because, um, and shout out to Maj for for linking in with other community members and relying on them. So shout out to that team. Maj then is like, oh my gosh, deals happen. This is real. Then Maj starts building some momentum. He has now um, formed a partnership with Renville, who is also in the community. He is the integrator on Maj's team. And he also has Joseph Long. Shout out to Joseph Long and um, Renville both in the community, amazing people, love them. I love that you guys are in a partnership. Now, you guys are doing a couple of deals a month. What is your primary um, way for sourcing these deals, Maj? Um, So for right now, we're going after expired listings and we're doing foreclosures. So we're pulling it directly from the county Okay. that we're getting these. And uh, so we're doing kind of DTS and DTA. I started off doing DTA. Uh, from the elephant challenge actually so we got a lot of traction from doing that uh, okay. when we first started so um that's actually how i got it my first deal with justin and ted was direct to agent but then i found out that it's, it's a little difficult to scale with an agent in the way so that's where i added on uh, foreclosures so we're doing uh, those two right now. Okay. Got it. Got it. I love this conversation. So what, what he's talking about is DTA stands for direct to agent means Mm -hmm. you're reaching out to real estate agents, typically where they have on market properties that are not selling. You're calling them, you're lowballing, you're trying to get under creative finance. You're doing everything you possibly can. The problem that Maj is talking about is that working with real estate agents is problematic in the sense that real estate agents, a lot of times can block the transaction from happening. And you end up playing babysitter with real estate agents Versus just calling expired listings where the expired listings have already fired the real estate agent. And Correct. not only is there not a real estate agent involved, that seller who just fired the agent freaking hates real estate agents and is like, yo, I just want to sell my house. So when you call an expired listing, um, shout out to Andrew McGuire in the sub two community who does Thursday live um, outreach for expired listings. So teaching the rest of the community how to do the same thing. It's good stuff. You're, yeah, it's really great stuff. So when you reach out to, by the way, his mom, his wife just came over to my house the other day doing yoga with my wife and she came up to me, gave me a hug and, and just like, I love you so much. Thank you for, you know, we were looking for a job. We were looking for a change of our life. And because of this community, we made $61,000 our first month doing um, wow. creative finance deals. He's made, I think probably $300,000 just since he started calling expired listings back in October. So a lot of success in expired listings because you can work directly with the seller. So you guys are doing a lot more direct to seller. You're doing foreclosure and expired listings. That's your primary outreach. Who's doing the outreach? Who's doing the calls? So it's uh, Joseph is doing the direct to agent portion of it. And then we've been going within the community now to find people that can make these calls. But I'm running into the issue where people say they can make them and then they're not hitting those numbers. So I have to go back in there and start making those calls again. And my role primarily is to close these um, deals out. So I'm kind of having to wear multiple hats, so to speak. Okay, great. Yeah. You just explained the the problems you're going to have for the rest of your life, no matter how hard you work and no matter how good you are. You yeah. will always wear more than one hat. <laughs> you will always run into these kind of problems. One thing that I can tell you is why does the, why is the sub two community a lifelong community? Well, one for me, it's important for me to have a relationship with you guys. When did you join Maj, our, our community? December 10th of 2021. Okay. So you've been in sub two for 
coming Almost on three, three years. years. Like this Almost will be your third year, year right? Yes. So one of the best things that I love about the sub two community is that I think the first six to 12 months is just people overcoming their mindset issues, right? Like a hundred percent, right? You were the, you, you were the same way. It took me seven years. So you did it seven Time. times faster than me. But the first six to 12 months is a lot of people overcoming mindset issues, fear, co connecting with other community members, aggregating and collecting information to feel comfortable to do the thing that they plan on doing. Some people have already overcame that um, and might take them two weeks, might take them, you know, two months, whatever. But mm -hmm. some people take six to 12 months. Now, why is that a problem for you? It's a problem for you because what you have done is a very smart thing where you've gone to the commu community members and say, who wants to make these expired listing calls? Who wants to make these expired listing calls? And you get so many people excited. I call them crickets. They <laughs> chirp, then chirp and chirp and chirp and chirp and chirp. And then when you walk into the room where a cricket is, what happens to their chirping? They stop. It stops. And so when you interface somebody with an opportunity and you put pressure on them, they go from, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to be on your team to, oh my gosh, now this is getting real. I'm stressed out and pressured, right? Mm -hmm. um, Gotronic says, Pace, what was the largest apartment deal you did? $110 million in Houston, Texas, 587 units, still the largest asset I currently own to this day. We are converting it to 687 units. I bought that for, um, seller finance. Um, and nice. I am, I've got some partners in that deal. I think I own about 20% of that deal by myself, which is cool. Um, but, uh, my largest deal I've done by myself is 256 units, $20 million. Um, that's up in Illinois. I have no, really no partners on that deal. I had a private money lender, but they're out of the deal. Now I, I bought them out, uh, refinance them out. So, uh, yeah, a lot of deals. I, I also have a lot of mobile home parks. Um, RV parks, and I have a 160 unit deal as well that I own with a lot of the people right here in the side chat. So um, here's the problem that you have. You're running into a problem where you have a couple of pro a couple of issues. Number one, I can tell you your upfront contract or your upfront agreement with these people that you are putting on your team is probably lacking. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are like, hey, who wants to join the team? Let's go. And then you give them homework. And then you're basically closing your eyes, hoping they're going to do the work. That's not how it works. That's like telling a um, a two-year-old or a one-year-old that is, should be walking by the time they're one. Here's how to walk. I, I trust you. I think you're going to do it. And then you leave the room instead of holding their hands and walking with them. And you're leaving the room and you're coming back an hour later and they've fallen on their face or they're not even around. And you're like, what the heck's wrong with you? I taught you, I told you how to do this. When you are bringing new people on your team that are willing to do the work for basically free and don't cost you any payroll, there is an exchange. The exchange is they are coming to you willing to give you time, energy, and effort for free um, so that you can give them a little bit of some babysitting. That's the trade-off. And if you're not willing to do the babysitting, then you should not bring them on your team. You are not giving them the baby babysitting. You're assuming because they're adults that they're going to do adult behavior, which is doing the work. They will not. It, they are learning to walk all over again, right? They're learning what expired. They still, some people still don't even know what the hell expired listings are, even though they're acting like they do. And they join your team. They're all excited. They don't want to disappoint you. And so they say they're going to do the thing. And then when they look at the phone, they go, oh my gosh, here's my suggestion. Okay. My suggestion is you should bring community members on your team and you should be making calls with them side by side in an open office format. And you should do that two days or three days a week for two to three hours. Okay. Does it suck? You have to do the work. Yes. Now what's going to happen is they're going to watch you do it. You're going to do some coaching. You're going to do some of the, those types of things and walking people through holding their hands as they're taking their first steps. Now, what will ultimately happen, Maj, this will take you three months to get to this point. There will become a leader among them. You will have to re-recruit by the way, almost weekly. This is the beautiful thing about sub wow. two. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. That doesn't make me feel too bad because I was doing it about weekly. Yeah. You're going to have to do it weekly. You're going to have to do in. And why do you think it's such a, a amazing opportunity to run a zoom inside of the sub two community? We have 39 zooms a week. Why do you think so many leaders want to run 
those Zooms. It's because it gives you a pedestal and it gives you a megaphone to talk to more sub two community members than you otherwise would be able to without that megaphone, if that makes sense. So, you know, I, I see uh, Chris Jean-Baptiste, he used to run the Monday Zooms um, a while back and it really gives you um, a lot more optics and eyeballs on you, okay? So, a mm -hmm. couple things that you should be doing. You should be doing an open office Zoom with the people on your team. If they don't show up to the Zoom when they're supposed to, then you just don't send them the link the next day and you set the expectations. Okay. So let's, let's start with step one. Cause you're, you're the thing about you, Maj, is you're very literal and you're very much an overthinker, which is a good thing, but I have to communicate with you differently. Okay. Here's what I need to do. I'm going to tell you step one through step 10 right now. Step number one. You need to figure out what your non-negotiables are for people on your team. What are those non-negotiables? Let's go through that right now. Your your wife, um, Anna, mm -hmm. she is also helping take notes. I, I'm sure your notes are written in vegetarian language. Nobody can <laughs> nobody will understand it. It's Basically, guys, here's the thing: he's drawing pictures of avocado avocados <laughs> and like cucumbers and stuff like that. He's not actually taking real notes. Okay. I got it right here. <laughs> He's the only one that understands avocado language and cucumbers and all that kind of stuff. And bananas. And bananas. Cool. <laughs> plantains. You're probably more of a plantain guy than a banana guy. Yeah, sweet plantains. Gross. <laughs> How do you not like plantains, bro? Because they're I know they're the original, but I like the I like the bastardized banana that is like all sugary and beautiful. It's great. Okay. So here's the expectations. <laughs> Expectation number one is you need to find out what are the best times for everybody to show up. You're going to get Saturday mornings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably the best time I'd say two hours on Saturday morning. Another time would probably be like Wednesday evening or something along those lines. And maybe a third time throughout the week where you personally, Maj, are showing up for that two hour increment where you show up and you do 30 minutes of calls just to warm everybody up. You get some hell no's, you get some drop calls, you get some hangups, and then you have one good conversation. You break it down for them, and then you go, okay, guys, everybody else, let's do the calls. And everybody then simultaneously goes and does their calls. You break up the expired listing so everybody, and they're supposed to make their 10 calls or whatever it is that, that day on the live Zoom. Mm -hmm. You then are on there with them. They make a couple of calls. You ask them some Q&A. And then you send them out there because now they have momentum. They see that it's okay to get hung up on, and you just continue. The biggest thing is they'll go do the call. They'll get hung up on one time or they'll be, they'll be asked some question they don't know the answer to. And they just hang up the phone out of nervousness. And then they go, I'm not doing that again. You, you need to be the person that is in open office format, in open Zoom. And in your non-negotiables, you need to tell them, you need to, in order to be on my team, you need to, A, Anna, I'm giving you the things, show up to these three Zoom times per week. If you cannot commit to any one of these non-negotiables, you will no longer be on the team, okay? Non-negotiable number one, we just talked about it. It is show up to the three Zooms per week. Here are the, here are the three timelines. You need to show up to two of the three per week. Make sense? Makes sense. It's okay for them not to show up to all of them, but they should show up to two out of the three. Number two, non-negotiables. They need to make X amount of calls every single week and record their calls, okay, or take notes of their calls, however you want to do that, and submit those every single Saturday. By the end of Saturday, they should have said, here's my 50 calls, hung up, hung up, hung up, hung up, whatever it is. This is a very barbaric example. You might be going, Pace, we have a CRM. Perfect. I don't want to hear about your stupid CRM. I don't want to hear about any of the technology you're using. You guys can figure that out on your own. I'm giving you an idea you need to figure that out. Okay. Got it. Um, there you go. Even Joey Milanazzo says, took me a long ass time to find beast <laughs> cold callers to be on my team. Very tough to get co uh, co competent people willing to work on commission only. Yes, it's very true. Shout and, out Joey. Yep. Shout out Joey. Okay. So that's non-negotiable number two. They need to submit something to you on a weekly basis. Okay. okay. That's non-negotiable number two. Non-negotiable number three. They need to be, um, I would probably have a team huddle once a week. Where is that you're team not, huddle, sorry, is that team huddle a part of the three times that we meet? Of course you were going to ask that question. You, What if, what would happen if <laughs> you could only ask one question a day? 
uh, I would, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have to think really hard what that one question is going to be. I know. You'd be, think, you'd be asking all the questions in your head. Um, okay, so the, yeah, so that you should have a team huddle talking about here's the st stats, here's what we've accomplished this week. You need, it's your job, Maj, to set the culture of your company. It comes from the top. If you are not having a weekly stand up meeting where everybody's getting together, you are going to have a lack of culture. So people need to show up and talk about what they did. Why is that important? One, okay, one, culture comes from you. Two, you get the ability to talk about a message or lessons you've learned and be vulnerable and share ideas with them. Like, hey guys, I learned this week that blah, 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 and such and such and such and such. Want to share that with you. It gives them permission to know that failure is actually a part of the process. It's not just okay, it's actually a requirement. So okay. this team huddle does all of these amazing things. You should use this team huddle as a way to start telling better stories, right? So when you're going mm. through your calls on a weekly basis, you should be telling a story that week of like, hey, one day I'm going to be on stage. One day Pace is going to call me up out of the crowd and say, hey, Maj, I've already done this to your, your wife. Hey, Maj, I need you to come, come up here and tell a story about a deal that you've done. And you're going to go, oh, dang, I haven't been practicing my storytelling. I haven't been practicing my things. And now I'm in a really uncomfortable position. And I'm going to look at you and go, what do you mean you haven't been practicing your storytelling? Are you not doing your team huddle every week and not telling them a story and something motivational or something, um, you know, transparent that you learned this week? No, Pace, I haven't been doing that. What? Why haven't you been doing that? Well, because Pace, you didn't tell me to do that. I'm right. telling you to do it right now. You should have a team huddle for your company talking about what you've accomplished, what the goals are for the following week, who's done their job, who hasn't done their job, and what the what what needs to be tweaked, changed, et cetera, for the, for the upcoming week, okay? That's everybody. That's Anna. That's Joseph Long. That's everybody. That's everybody on the acquisition team, everybody that's a sub two student that co you come and recruit them underneath you. They need to show up to that team huddle, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Got it? Roger those that. are those are three non-negotiables. Do you have any other non-negotiables that you're like, I really don't want people to, to forget this. They need to do this. They need to blah, blah, blah. What what are some other non-negotiables? Communication, like not communicating the fact that they're not going to show up. And then I find out I'm just like, oh, they're not here. And then I'll text them. They're like, nope. oh, yeah, send me the link. I would delete that expectation in your mind. If somebody mm. doesn't show up, you're off the team. That is expectation number four. I'm not going to follow up with you. I'm not going to ask you to show up. I'm not going to beg you. If you do not show up, you just need to understand that you have failed to show up. I don't need excuses. Now, Maj, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something exactly what I mean by this. So, for example, you and um, Anna need to sit down. I'm, I'm going to, you better be writing effing notes right now. I got them right your here. Your wife, you need to be better be writing notes, okay? <laughs> you guys need to sit together on your bed, put a camera in front of you and say, "Hey, this is Maj. Hey, this is Anna. We're so excited that you're joining the team. We love this community. We want to go through our non-negotiables with you and we want to do this, this and this." Da, 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 da. There should be a video that every time somebody joins your team, they have to watch that video and at the end they have to sign a docu sign that states they understand the non-negotiables. That's beautiful. Makes sense? Yeah. You're being too nice to people. And you're and what you're doing is you're setting impress. You are actually setting them up for failure. So here's what I've learned. When I don't give people proper expectations, they are you Mosh. 99% of people on the planet are used to being told what to do, where to go, what to what to wear, what not to wear. Nope, you can't wear that. You can't wear yoga pants to work. Your booty's too big. People be looking at that booty. You can't wear yoga pants. Okay, you, you, your break is 15 minutes every two hours. Okay, your mm -hmm. lunch is only 30 minutes. You need to be here at this time and you need to be at the Christmas party. And They have been told what to do, what not to do. And here's your job description. Here's every expectation about your job. Here's your KPIs. Take all of that kind of stuff. That's what people are used to. And you gave them none of that. And your and your expectation is, well, I told them to call expired listings and they didn't show up. So we've done, we, we do put together like a JV agreement and all that stuff. But I think the video format that you mentioned will make it much more easier to absorb. And more important, you don't want to you don't want to do this 
conversation in this meeting over and over and over and over and over yourself. You tell people mm -hmm. to come and join your team. Here's the video. Here's all of our non-negotiables. If you agree to these things, then please sign the DocuSign. What happens? And you, one of the things that you should be doing is walking through everything we're talking about, like non-negotiable non number one was what? Non-negotiable number one is that you need to show up to the Zooms, uh, the three Zooms every week. Non-negotiable number two was what? No, Non-negotiable number three was what? Non-negotiable number four is if you need me to remind you to do your job, I'm going to just assume that is your resignation. Mm -hmm. I will not be following up with you. That not only needs to be in the video that you guys give them in the very beginning, it needs to be in the JV agreement of I will not babysit you. Okay. I have given you proper expectations. I've given you KPIs. I've given you these things. You should also have a trainual account. I don't know if you have a trainual account. Trainual. No, I don't. Okay, you should have a trainual of here's all the things that you need to know. How to log into Vulcan 7, how to log into this, how to get your leads for the day, how many people you should call, how what, how do you submit your lead, what, what do you say here? There should be 15 or 20 micro videos that your team makes specific to your expectations and how their position runs. Okay, and that, that's more of like an integrator thing to get that together. I think we do have something like a trainual. If you think you have something like a trainual, then you do not have a trainual. Okay. I guess I don't then. Okay. You do not have a trainual. You do not have a system for this. There should be questions, and that should be also a non negotiable as well. Okay. Cal 9796 says trainual is one way unlisted YouTube videos on a channel works too. Agreed with that 100%. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, if you don't want to spend the money, it totally makes sense. Um, now Joey Milanos says, I hate being told what to do exact, the exact reason why I've, I've had one W2 my whole life. And it was when I was 15. However, I'm going to tell you 99% of people love being told what to do. Yeah. Believe it I or not, that, Joey, they love being told what to do. They love being told also what not to do. And so my education style has evolved as I have learned this more and more and more as I just tell people shut the hell up and listen to me and take notes because I'm not going to, we're not going to do a Q and I'm just going to tell you exactly what to do. And then people go, Oh, amazing. Thank you for just telling me what to do. So I don't have to guess. Mm -hmm. Now, why do they love being told what to, what to do? Because, well, part of it's their personality. Secondly, they haven't built up enough um, courage and they haven't built up enough experience to understand that the world, see the world in a different light. Okay. They're seeing the world in a completely different color. They're seeing it in 1D. I'm seeing it in 4D. And I cannot expect them to operate the same way. My job is to get them to see 2D and then 3D and then go out on their own. Your job, Maj, is to get these people out on their own, in their own business within a year or less. Okay, that's your job. Now, what are some other non-negotiables? I don't want to babysit you. I'm not going to text you. If you don't show up, I'm automatically going to assume that you have resigned. You not showing up to the meeting is... Okay. Juan Camillo Gavaria says, how do I start from scratch? You want to know how to start from scratch? Watch this. Okay. Let's, let's show Elephant people challenge. Um, yeah, that's a good place to start. Elephant challenge is a good place to start. Watch this. Let's talk about being resourceful. My friends, for people that are like, wait, I came on here to learn how to start from scratch. Guys, if I had to do every episode of every get creative about how to start from scratch, I would literally just scratch out my eyeballs. It's physically impossible for me to talk about that topic any more than I already have. Watch this, Pace Morby, get started. Oh, how to get started in real estate, Creative Finance 101, how to get started, how to, how to uh, okay, here we go. Um, there's so many, how to get, I have a whole get started in real estate investing playlist. View the full playlist. Boom, 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 boom. How to get started right here. Welcome to my channel. How to make money in real estate. Three ways. Okay, let's go back here. Um, start start your LLC. Um, there's another, oh, how to get started in real estate part one. 42,000 views, okay? How to get an Airbnb. Okay, who cares about that one? Um, da, 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 da. How do I get, here we go. How do I get started in real estate investing? Zero to hero, 21,000 views two years ago. 
Get your first deal for dummies. Start here. If your question is, how do I get started? Literally type in YouTube, how do I get started? Okay. That's how I came across you, Pace, actually. I probably watched most of those videos, too. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Love that. Cool. So here we go. Uh, there you go. Juan Camillo says, beautiful. Thank you, sir. There you go. Love it. Um, all right. So now you've got your non-negotiables, right? And yep. I, I came up with four of them for you. You and your team, you guys should have a meeting after this tomorrow, sometime this week, whatever, and go, hey, Joseph. Hey, um, Renville. Hey, Anna. What are the other things we are frustrated about by leading a team? And how do we create those as non-negotiables that when people just break these non-negotiables, we just take that as their resignation instead of following up and going, hey, we're going to give you another chance. Hell no. You do not give them another chance. Right. Why? Because we'll do it again. They, you are, here's, um, here's something to remember. Human beings are, um, operate off of learned behavior. Okay. If you tell a child, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, but you let them do that and you go, Hey, I'm going to take your iPad away. If, it, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to take your iPad. If you don't stop doing that and you never take the iPad away, what do you think happens? They just learn that you are a punk bitch and you will, you will not do anything you said you're going to do. Right. Right. In, in fact, your little your little one year old at some point, Maj, if you don't take the iPad away, your ch your child is going to be thinking in their mind, man, my dad's a little punk bitch. <laughs> Never. OK, because you because you'll execute on the punishment. Right. The punishment is if you don't show up, that's your resignation. Mm -hmm. Make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. OK, cool. So you and your team need to come up with your non-negotiables. That needs to be in your JV agreement. Your JV agreement also, here's the other thing I would set as an expectation. Don't pay people a dollar on their first deal. Wow. Okay. Why is, if that? People, why is that? Let me ask you a question, Maj. If two years ago, Somebody told you, I'll help you get your first deal and break that paradigm for you, but you don't make a dollar off of it. Would you be willing to have your hand held through that process to have that paradigm shattered and not make a dollar at the end of the fir your first deal? Yeah. Yes or yes? Yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah, I, it took me like a full year, almost a year and a half. In of the overthinking of until Ted Miller and Justin Tubinowski just grabbed you by the hand and walked you through that, right? Yeah. Okay, so we all know that that's, what, that's more important than anything else is having a community. So what you're bringing to the table is your leadership and, and you being in the community a long period of time. You're bringing two years of experience to the table. Mm -hmm. They're bringing nothing to the table. Okay, you are providing value. Now, what I would tell them is if you're not okay with not making money on your first deal, then do not join my team. That's another non-negotiable. That is a non-negotiable. In fact, I would tell everybody in sub two that same exact thing. I will not pay you on your first deal because that first year, here's what I'm paying you. I'm paying you in a paradigm shattering. That's what you're receiving. I'm breaking every belief you thought you had about yourself and I'm doing it as a community leader inside of this community. That is what I'm paying you. And I'm paying it forward because somebody did it for me. I'm doing it for you. Mm hmm then our split starts. You know what this really does? Who cares about the money, Maj? You could even pay them if you really wanted to after the deal is done. But don't bring somebody on your team that's not willing to come and work for you for free because those people are the worst kind of entitled human beings. Okay? So I know it. Um, I had Andrew McGuire came to me. I'm going to tell you a quick little funny story. Okay. Andrew McGuire calls me three weeks ago. I'm in Temecula, California. I'm at a mastermind. I pay a hundred grand a year to go to. And I get a call from Andrew McGuire. He says, I have somebody on my team, right? He's doing the same thing that you're doing. This is something I've inspired everybody in the, in the um, community to do. Go build teams internally, help people get their first deal. That's what this community is all about. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're doing a great job of that. And other people are doing a great job. Andrew McGuire calls me. He goes, I have somebody on my team that is upset with the split and they just got their first deal. Wow. And I said, okay, what, what, what'd you pay them? Like 10%? And he's like, no, I paid them 60% of the deal. Wow. 
I go, you paid them 60% of their own first deal. You should have, it should have been the opposite. Best, best case scenario for them, you should have been 40% them, 60% you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why are they upset? Yeah. And I go, oh, I know why they're upset. Because you created entitlement, Andrew. That's your job to not create entitlement. You need to remind them with an expectation of, I'm going to help you get your first deal. That first deal and that paradigm shattering will be worth millions of dollars for you. If you're not willing mm -hmm. to take this deal with no money on your first deal, then I don't want you on my team. That's golden. If you then would have paid them 10% of the first deal, they would have felt like they won the lottery because now they got their first deal and you decided to pay them 10% even after they signed an agreement saying that you would not pay them a dollar. Make sense? Yeah. I tell Andrew, I said, you actually soured that person. They did not make a mistake. You set them up for failure because you made them entitled. Interesting. So you can actually make people entitled based yes. off of the first uh, yes. upfront contract. Yes, 100%. Okay. I think I've definitely done that. <laughs> Yes, you have 100%. This is why I went down this road. This is why I told you I was why I'm being aggressive with you. You have actually because here's the challenge. Our community is all about giving, 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 loving on people and helping everybody out. So that's the culture. The problem is when you build a team, you have to change that culture a little bit and go, you're now coming on my team. I know you're in the community, but this is the expectation. And the expectation is your first deal, you'll make no money. If that's not okay with you, then don't join my team. Go join somebody else's team and I'll let them sour you and I'll let them make you entitled. And then you can be frustrated when you only get paid 60% of your first deal and then you leave the business because you felt like you got taken advantage of. This is what's funny. The person that makes 60% on their first deal is an entitled asshole that decides, I hate this business. Somebody took advantage of me. They took 40% of the deal and I made 42 calls and I'm only made 60%. This is BS. They will leave the business because you, not because of them, because of you not understanding human behavior. It is your job as a leader to understand human behavior and that they need to have the expectation set properly that they should make nothing for their first deal because they are actually making millions of dollars based on the fact that their paradigm has been shattered. Make sense? Mm -hmm. This is what's funny. Listen to this story. Andrew McGuire then goes on to tell me how this conversation with him, okay, he just he put, made this big, long post in the Facebook group. I don't know if you guys saw this, this post he made, but it was this long post. He sent a He actually put a screenshot in. Um, let's pull this up. Oh, my gosh. So this is recent. Um, yep. Yeah, this is really recent, like less than 30 days ago. Um. Oh my gosh. Just so you guys know, anybody in sub two that watches, um, is watching this right now. If you guys think I'm the only person that gets, or you think you're the only person that gets your posts deleted in Facebook, my posts get deleted in Facebook all the effing time. It's the worst F Facebook. We got to leave. We got to get off of Facebook. So let's go, let's go in and let's have a conversation. Let's look up Andrew McGuire. Okay. And let's see some of his more recent posts. Um, okay, cool. He made a post. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. There's just me talking about him. Okay, Andrew McGuire. Okay, January 10th. Okay, who wants to work on our team? Okay, boom, boom, boom. Where is this post? He made this unbelievable, amazing post. Facebook probably deleted it because Facebook sucks. Um, yeah. Basically, it's a screenshot. Okay, it's a screenshot of a conversation. Okay, most recent. There we go. Oh my gosh, this could be bad because it's like everybody that's tagged Andrew McGuire in the Facebook group. But it's uh, you. You can go back and read it. It's a post that he made. Um, oh my gosh, this is one day ago. This guy, I could go. I could look how many. Look how active our community is. Holy crap! Amazing, 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 amazing. Well, yeah. basically, here's the what the post said. Okay. I could go back and find it if I had some time, I, but the, I got to be on a podcast. I got to entertain people instead of actually teach. <laughs> so, um, so entertaining. This is what he does. 
He takes a screenshot of the phone call him and I are on, and I broke down how he ruined that person, and I changed his paradigm, and I said, that's not that, that person's fault for being entitled. That's your fault for making them entitled. As a leader, you should have set the expectation. You don't understand leadership, Andrew, and that's your responsibility to be a leader. He's like, damn, you're right. And more importantly, I just realized that I treated Kevin Cho like shit when Kevin Cho helped me get my first creative finance deal. I was frustrated with Kevin Cho that I didn't make more money because Kevin Cho was too freaking nice to me on my first deal too. Hmm. So he went back and apologized to Kevin Cho and said, wow, Kevin brought so much more to the table than just helping me find a buyer. Kevin Cho gave confidence to me. He gave guidance to me. He gave a, a new relationship to me. He basically made sure that my deal got done. And I sat there and was like, he did one hour of work. And I was frustrated. I go, because he made you entitled. He made you entitled. And he's like, wow, what a paradigm shift. And so Andrew, I go, Andrew, would you do me a favor and just make that post in the Facebook group for all the sub two community members to see so that leaders like Maj that in the future that I didn't know he had this problem that when Maj reaches out to me to bother me about this problem, you can be the person that Maj should call and go, hey, Andrew, how did you fix this entitlement on your team? Go collaborate with Andrew, you knucklehead. Okay. So you made these people entitled and you and Anna, your, your, your fiance, your Anna, your fiance have soured these people because you did not give them a job. Here's what you should be doing. Think of this as a job. 99% of people, Maj, are jobbers. They want to be told their job description, exactly when to show up, when not to show up, what's my job description, what are my do's, what are my don'ts, what, how can I make money, what are my expectations, how do I know what success looks like, how do I know what failure looks like. Everything that I just said in my question, or in, in what I just said in the last 15 seconds, if you have not typed that out, and handed that to them like a job description, and then you have false expectations that they're going to show up to every one of your Zooms, you failed, not them. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. So when you're building a team, this is the hardest part about the team is that you have to be the person that sets them up for success. Then you can confidently say, can I tell you something that's really funny? Some of the people that are on your team right now, you have ruined them and they will not be on your team. And what will happen is they will come, go on somebody else's team and they'll flourish because it wasn't actually them that was the problem. It was you. I accept that. I have had to accept that so many times in my career. I have ruined so many opportunities for myself and I've wasted months of other people's lives coming and working for me that I had poor, poor, poor leadership about. Right. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a tough pill to swallow, but yeah, it makes sense. There you go. So you, it is a tough pill to swallow. I have to swallow it almost monthly where I'm like, I was being a poor leader there. I said something I shouldn't have said, or I didn't set an expectation, or I haven't had a meeting about it. And I thought I had a meeting, but I didn't have the meeting long enough. I didn't record the meeting and throw it up on Trainual so that when a new person, here's the other thing, when a new person now gets hired, when a new person now gets hired, you have to set that expectation and all this stuff all over again. So set video, all the stuff up in video. So what before anybody even gets a single lead from you, they've got to watch your Trainual series of like, Here's the expectations. Here's who we are. Here's what we stand for. Here's what our company's goals are. Here's what our ex expectations. All of that stuff has to be in a video format before they sign the contract. When they sign the contract, mm -hmm. they have to have finished all the videos. So that now when they don't show up, here's, let me tell you an interesting story. Okay. I had a girl that comes in and just does a job interview with me at my construction company about 11 years ago. Her name was Azul. Not that that's important for you. But Azul comes in, she interviews with me, and I said, hey, I have heard so many excuses for new employees starting their first week. My, I have a flat tire, I don't have a car, my grandma died, my dog died, my grandma ate my dog, my dog ate my grandma, every single excuse under the book. Here are the top 25 excuses I've heard in my life, and I literally printed this off. I handed it to Azul and I said, if you are going to give me an excuse of why you're not going to show up on time or come to work within the first seven days of starting this company, do me a favor. 
and at least make up an excuse I've never heard before. I at least want to be entertained. I've heard every effing excuse that every human being has ever effing come up with. I would love to hear something new. So she goes, oh, no, I'll never call in sick. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Blah, 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 blah. The next day, bro. She does it. She calls me up and she says, hey, um, I just want to let you guys know I'm running late um, because uh, you know what? I quit. <laughs> hangs up <laughs> I love and the that. reason why she quit is because i set the expectation of is like if you're going to break if you're going to give me any one of these excuses in the first seven days of working for me just quit that's what i told her in my first meeting just quit i don't want to talk to you i don't want to deal with it now i was professional i just said hey azul these are the excuses we hear I, I just don't have any like leniency on any of this you're sick in your first week you're fired sorry but like the, the likelihood of you getting sick the first week you start here is going to be incredibly low. Like you might get sick one time a year. Are you going to tell me that it's the only freaking thing, only week that you got sick was the week you were supposed to start working for me? If that's the case, you know what? You're fired. I don't care. I've, I, I've just dealt with this for so many years. I have no, I have no leniency. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I never get sick. I never this. I never that. Oh my gosh. This is it. Oh, I, bro. And what, where, what, what is speaking? Is it Pace Morby speaking? No, it's experience and wisdom speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are now going through what you need to go through. This is amazing. You, Anna, Joseph Long, Renville, you guys all should be so proud of yourselves because you're going through the pain and the heartache of knowing what it feels like when you don't set proper expectations of your team. You now don't need me to tell you that you are going to run into problems when you don't set up proper expectations. Human beings are like animals. They need to be trained to not piss on the rug. Your people are pissing off the rug or pissing on the rug. And you're like, why is my brand new puppy is pissing all over the, the rug and causing issues? Like, did you train them? Well, no, they, they should know that they shouldn't pee outside. It's common knowledge. Right? Yeah. Cool. You know, I mean, I would hope that is common knowledge, but it's common sense isn't so common, I suppose. If common sense was common, then I would have competition. I don't have any competition in my life because nobody shows up because every like nothing's common practice, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So non-negotiables, videos, you and your team need to sit down and go, what are the things that are non-negotiables? The more stern you are, the better. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, now how do I recruit more people in the community? Well, you can make posts in the Facebook group. Obviously you can do one-on-ones with people. You can go into Andrew McGuire's Thursday zoom and go, Hey guys, I've got a team. We're recruiting. If you guys are in here, happy to come and join. Like there's so many ways for you to recruit. Here's what I would say. I would say you should have five people on your team and every single week you should be looking at two of those people and going, I got to replace you every single week. Two people need to be replaced. Even myself, because like, I don't want to be working in the business. I want to be working on it. You haven't deserved to work on it. Okay. People that say, I want to work smart before I, like, bro, you have to work hard before you have the chance to work smart. What, are, what is the work hard you have to do? Here's the thing that you have to do. If you are the sales director for your organization, sounds like you are. Yeah. Okay. Guess what you have to do before you move on? You have to replace yourself with somebody who's trustworthy and that can run that team, recruit that team, and do all of that stuff without you involved. It's going to take you six months. Six months. Okay. Guess what? It took you a year and a half to get your first deal. Six months ain't shit. No, not at all. It, it, blink your eyes. It'll be over. <laughs> Okay. It's going to be a painful blink, but yeah. Not really. Tr treat it like a fun game. Journal. Make content around True. it. Talk about the things yeah. that you've learned. Think about what kind of person you will become in six months. Think about what kind of people now can rely on you in the community for being a leader and going, guys, I successfully built a team. Anybody have questions, please let me know. Like, Think about all the people that are going to look at you and go, Maj, you freaking did it. Type out all the things that we are sitting there 
what kind of amazing skill sets, re relationships, resources you will have accumulated through six months of that work. It's really not even that much work. It's 10 hours of work a week. Right. That's it. You're showing up to the three Zooms a week. You're doing some two or three hours of um, recruiting and an hour long company meeting every single week. You're, you're involved 10, 12 hours a week. That ain't nothing. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I know. Yeah, and I was I was thinking of um, just having that point. So you said it would be six months till I can replace myself, and then also during that time, I would be able to replace everybody else with on the team. The and, team that you have this week will not be with you in two months. Okay. Not one person. The team you have in two months, one or two of them will be there in six months. So is that the approach that you had when you and Cody started working together? I have that approach every day with all employees, every single company of mine. It's the same thing. Okay. Now we can talk about the, the other side of this. It's not your fault or my fault at the end of the day. It's these horrible parents' fault that never taught their children to love hard work, hard work and be obsessed with hard work like you and I are. I'm obsessed with hard work. I don't want to chill. I don't want to relax. Mama didn't raise no bitch. My mom raised a kid that that not only enjoys work, I'm obsessed with work. I find I find purpose in work and I know you do too. Okay? The problem is most if not like 90% of people are not like that. They are actually working so they don't have to work. Bro, if you handed me a billion dollars tomorrow, I'm just gonna find out how to work harder and more efficiently tomorrow. And people are gonna go, you have a billion dollars. Yeah, the, the mission was never money, right? You and I have a different mission. We have a different idea of what life is. Most people are like, I just wanna work so I can get like a couple of deals and just stop working. That's the type of people you're dealing with, bro. True. So at the majority of them will not work out and you need to be very, you need to be very quick, um, like transparent with them. Hey guys, like I've talked to Pace. Most of you guys won't make it. You're not, you're going to break our non-negotiables. That's perfectly fine. I'll see you at meetups. Well, I'll love on you. You might not be ready. You can come back and reapply in six months. Happy to have you come back. You might just have some mindset issues. That's okay. And if you fall out, I won't hold anything against you and you won't hold anything against me. It just wasn't the right timing. That's it. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you need to have all those expectations of them so that when you guys part ways, it's part parting ways with love. Okay. Right now you're like, I don't know how to let these people go. Well, get in a time machine and set proper expectations and an agreement that says, what's our safe word? What's the word that we just say to each other that we just know it's not working? Right now, you don't have that. Right now, I guarantee you there's somebody, or if not a couple of people on your team right now that you're like, I wish I could just send them the text, a text of the magic word plantain, and they would just know <laughs> this relationship's over, but I love you. I'm going to add that in the or, or, uh, JV now. There you go. <laughs> plantain it is, or banana. Yeah, whatever it is, right? So set the expectation and say, look, if I ever send you the word pl plantain or banana, or you send it to me, that just means that we're going our different ways. We're splitting up like a banana split, like a plantain split. We're splitting up, <laughs> but more importantly, we're releasing each other with love and we will speak respectfully of both of each other after the relationship has been um, severed. Make sense? Always. Yeah. That makes a hundred percent sense. There you go. Because both people will blame each other when it doesn't work out. If those words are not spoken. So, so you don't do like a written resignation or anything like that. No. Okay. Okay. Hey and guys, um, you got Juan Camillo says, I've got a seller in Chicago willing to sell her finance. Anybody interested to walk me through and make some money? Three properties. Yes. A lot of people in this community are right here in the side chat are willing to help you out. Guys, reach out to Juan Camillo. Gabaria. Juan. He's the only Juan. <laughs> only Juan. Only Juan. Okay. So, plantain, whatever it is, whatever that word is, hey, it's not working out. Hey, uh, love you, but this isn't working out. Hey, I can't wait to see you in another Zoom. Um, hey, reapply in six months when you fix some of your, because a lot of times people come in and go, oh my gosh, like I 
don't like making calls. I want to just buy deals from other people who are making calls. This was not a good th thing. You should mm -hmm. allow them to break up with you very positively too and go, hey, plantain, bro. <laughs> that casual, just plantain, bro. Yeah, exactly. why not? Send them a plantain emoji. How, how good would it be right now if there were two people on your team that just sent you a plantain text and you just go, perfect, love it? It'd be straightforward, simple. Right now, you're like, what do I say to these people? How do I talk to them? You're, they're not doing their job, but they're on my team, and I feel responsible to them. You are responsible to them because you sucked at being a leader. Guess what? I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to me 10 years ago, five years ago, four years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with this so many times. I still deal with it. I had a two-hour meeting at lunch today talking about improper or proper expectations with people on my own team that I'm like, I failed in November to set proper expectations. Why do you think I'm so versed on this, bro? Because I've done it so wrong that for so long. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to, you know, chat with you on this topic. And I truly appreciate you going so deep in it. And I've learned tons just, just going through this. Okay. So uh, here's the thing. I was going to be on here for 40 minutes. I've been on here for now 57 minutes with you. You have more than enough stuff to take home. If you want to do a follow-up thing, I will do a follow-up thing with you in two weeks, maybe three. What okay. I want is for you to fix all your expectations. I want you to go recruit some new people to your team. And I want all of these expectations, the non-negotiables, the this, the that, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. There you go. Okay. The biggest issue we had, check this out. Myron says, the biggest issue we had was putting people on the team that aren't made for cold calling or reaching out to building rapport with sellers or agents. The reason those people believe they should be is because they're like, oh, I think that that's what I should be doing. No, you should probably be a, maybe a transaction coordinator. You should maybe be a capital raiser. You should maybe be a, 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 a buyer. Just buy the deals, partner with people, right? Go do a fund of funds. There's a thousand different ways for you to be mm. successful. And a lot of people just come in and go, I guess I should just go do deals. That's what they assume they should be doing. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Myron says they think that's what success is, which is so not. Should I see what their history is like? No, because some people like you, you imagine if somebody came to me, Pace Dog, <laughs> and said, what's your history like? You've been a, nothing but a contractor and they didn't yeah. allow me on their team because I had just been a contractor. No, 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 no. Give them the chance. Give them a week and go, hey, I'm going to assume uh, that some of you guys on the team might not be a good fit. Just send me the word plantain mm -hmm. if this doesn't work out for you. I'm perfectly fine with it. I'll understand um, that it's because you just aren't made for this. That's perfectly cool. You'll go find a different avatar to focus on. Okay. There's 26 avatars. All you're doing is direct agent and direct to seller. There's two avatars out of 26. They have 24 other options to go and make money inside the community. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Crystal. Okay. Crystal. Go to work. Yeah, most definitely will. I appreciate your time, Pace. Thank you so much for uh, doing this. And uh, show me I, a text been... message. Let's do a follow up. I, I got you got homework. Anna, put this together. Make this man do the homework. Follow up with me via text message in a couple of weeks. We'll do another follow up one hour thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 For sure. Uh, side note, I wanted to send you a gift. What's the best way to do it? I know you don't accept gifts, but send uh, the gift to Justin Tumanowski. He deserves it more than I do. Okay. I'll send it to both you and Justin. It better not be and pictures Ted. of your feet or <laughs> actually if it's pictures of your feet, squishing plantains, I will take that. Oh, all right. One will be plantains, one will be avocados, depending on what you like. <laughs> um, you're the man, bro. I appreciate you. You're the man too, Pace. Much love. Hey, guys. Thank you for coming to Get Creative. We will be back next week for an hour. Maybe um, we'll, you'll see the follow-up. I'd love to see the follow-up with Maj. Um, I beat him up a little bit today because I needed that a couple of years ago. I wish somebody beat me up the way that Maj just got beat up a little bit. Proud of you, brother. Um, you, you're, you're doing the thing, man. So uh, watching the change in you has been so fun and watching you grow up and be even more of a man than you already are has been so impressive. Super proud of you. Wow. And congrats on the, the, the wedding. You could not have chose a better woman for yourself than that woman. She is spectacular. It. So good job. Thank you, Pace. I appreciate it. Thanks okay. for having me on here. Later guys. Get creative. We'll see you next week. Much love, everybody.